Welcome to the training course on IBM Scalable Architecture for Financial Reporting, or SAFR. This is Module 20, Overview of SAFR User Exit Routine. Upon completion of this module, you should be able to describe uses of SAFR User Exit Routines, read a logic table and trace which contain user exits, explain the function codes used in the example, and debug views using exits. The prior modules covered the function codes highlighted in blue. Those to be covered in this module are highlighted in yellow. These include the RENX, LUEX, and WREX functions. Let's briefly review the SAFR performance engine processes. SAFR begins by developers creating metadata describing records, files, fields, relationship between files and fields, and user exits, which might be called to perform processing in the workbench. They then create views, which specify the logic to be applied to the data through the scan processes. The metadata and views are stored in the SAFR view and metadata repository, awaiting the start of the performance engine. The first part of the performance engine performs the select logic and reference file phases. The select phase selects the views and associated metadata for those views from the view metadata repository. Alternatively, this phase can read data provided in a SAFR XML schema, which defines the metadata and function to be performed against the data. It bundles either of these into a VDP, the view definition parameter file. The VDP is used in the logic table phase to produce two logic tables, one for the reference file phase and one for the extract phase. The logic tables contain function codes described in this and the prior modules. The extract phase logic table is used to process event files, but before that the reference file logic table is used to extract core image files from the reference files. The reference file logic table does not contain any selection logic, thus it does not remove any rows of data. Rather, the core image file contains only those fields, columns, needed to be loaded into memory for joins, plus the keys required for the join processes and any effective, da effective dates. The extract phase begins by loading the VDP extract phase logic table and reference data from disk. It then uses a logic table to generate machine code for each thread, each input file partition. It then opens input and output files and executes these threads according to the thread governor in parallel. Each event file record is read and processed through the logic table, performing joins and writing selected data to output extract files. The extract phase includes multiple types of user exits, including read, write, and lookup exits, highlighted on this graphic by the green balls. The format phase, which is optional depending upon the view requirements, begins by sorting each extract file using a custom generated sort card based upon the sort criteria of the view written to that extract file. During the final phase of sort processing, that which writes data to disk, the records are passed in memory to the format engine. These records are formatted according to the VDP app specification. The data is written to the final output file. The format phase includes the format exit, shown here at the end of the format process. Sort utilities also allow creating sort input exits, shown here over the sort process. Let's overview each of these user exits. User exits, which can also be thought of as API points, are custom programs to perform functions SAFR does not do natively. For example, SAFR does not perform any exponential mathematical calculation. A customer could create a program to perform this function and call it from SAFR to return the results of the calculation. As noted, SAFR has four major points which can invoke a user exit, read, lookup, write, and format exits. The first three are extract phase exits and are used much more frequently than the fourth format phase exit. They are read exits stand between the actual input file and the SAFR views. These exits can modify input records to be presented to SAFR threads for processing. Lookup exits stand between SAFR views and lookup data loaded into memory. Lookup exits accept join parameters and return return looked up records in response to individual joins. These exits can also be used as simple function calls which do not actually perform any lookups. For example, the exponential calculation discussed above 
could be written as a lookup exit. Write exits stand between SAFR and the extract files. They receive extract records and can manipulate them before being written to extract files. Format exits, the only GBB MR88 exit, except summarized and formatted uh, format phase output records prior to being written to files. Format exits are very similar to write exits except that the records used in the final output record rather than the extract record. At the end of this module, we will touch upon non saffir exits, the sort input exits. As noted, read exits sit between the extract engine and the input event file. The SAFR views inside GBBMR95 are only aware of the virtual file, which is output by the read exit. Read exits are assigned to a physical file and are placed on the RENX logic table function. It is called each time the RENX function is executed. Examples of read exits that have been written for SAFR applications include reading a specialized database structure and extract every record to be passed to SAFR to allow SAFR to produce reports against those records. Merge multiple sequential files and compare snapshot records with history files into a single master file, then used to produce reports. Process sets of records and perform functions across entire sets where one record can affect either later or earlier records. SAFR does not easily perform these functions in views. After all effects are determined and applied, the file is passed to SAFR to re for report generation. Read exits are typically the most complex to write because they must perform some I.O. They are further complicated because it is very inefficient to call a read exit for each record, so instead they are usually written to do block level processing. Lookup exits sit between the extract engine and a potential lookup file. The SAFR views are only aware of the virtual lookup record output from the lookup exit. A sample application could be doing direct reads to a database table to retrieve a join value for processing. However, most often lookup exits do not actually load any data from disk. Rather, they simply use parameters to them by the views to do some function. Thus, the exit is basically a simple function call. Lookup exits are the easiest type of exit to create. The parameters passed to the lookup exit are the values placed in the fields of the join key. These can be constants, fields from event files, or fields from another lookup, including calls to other exits. The output from the lookup exit is a record that must match the LR for the quote-unquote reference file record it is to return. Although it appears to SAFR developer as if SAFR has taken keys and performed a search of a reference data to find the appropriate record, the exit may have done no such thing. In fact, it could do something as simple as reordering the fields passed to it and returning the record. Lookup exits are assigned to a target lookup LR. When used, the typical LUSM functions are changed to LUEX functions. The exit is called each time the LUEX function is executed. Certain modules are delivered with the product, called SAFR standard lookup exits. These perform common set of functions, not in a native SAFR. For example, GBB XLEXP is an exponential calculator. If passed a number, format an exponent, it will perform the calculation. GBB XLMD accepts two dates and computes days between those dates. GBB XLRUD simply returns the SAF for fiscal date, uh, fiscal year data passed in through the VDP. GVB XLST accepts strings and concatenates them and returns a single string value. GVB XLTM performs trim functions against passed string parameters. Write exits sit between the extract engine and a potential extract or output file. Each write exit is tightly coupled to its SAFR view because the exit receives the view output. Extract exits are called whenever a view is to write an extract record. In addition to the view's extract record, the write exit is also passed and can access the event record. Write exits are associated with a view since the view or write statement within the view 
generates the WREX logic table function and creates the extract record. The write exit can tell GVBMR95 to do any one of the following. To write a record, uh, the exit specifies it could be a different record than the one it was passed. To skip this extract record and go on. To write a record specified and return to the exit to do more processing. The exit can manipulate the extract record, substitute a new record, table and an extract record in some way, and then dump the table at the end of event file processing, or any number of things. Note, though, that unlike read exits, which do open and actually read files, write exits typically do not. They return records to SAFR to write them to extract files. They could do their own I.O., but there is typically no benefit to doing so. SAFR write routines are very efficient. Some examples of write exits include the following. Table multiple records, summarize them if they have a common sort key, and write records when the key changes. Read a set of parameters giving scoring requirements, table multiple records upon a key change, and score the records. Complete a scoring record process at the end of uh, view processing and dump the tables recorded. Write exits are in between read exits and lookup exits for complexity. This is mainly because of the complexity of dealing with extract records. The exit must know what the extract record will look like for a particular view. This might be easiest to determine by actually writing a view and inspecting extracted records to find positions and lengths. Any changes in the view can create a need to update the write exit. Using exits requires that they first be described in the user exit routine screen within the workbench. The name can be anything desired. The type can be either read, lookup, write, or format. The language and path are for documentation only. The executable must match the name of the load module stored within an accessible load library for either GVBMR95 or GVBMR88. The optimizable flag is only applicable for lookup exits. Remember that SAFR bypasses certain lookups when the lookup has already been performed. In these cases, the lookup exit would not be called in subsequent cases. If the lookup exit is stateless, in other words, it does not function differently from one execution to another given the same input parameters, the exit can be optimized. If the exit retains its state from one call to the other, then it must be called each time and cannot be optimized. For example, one exit was written to detect the first time it was called for a particular event file record. In this case, it would return a return code of zero. Every subsequent call would return a return code of one. This exit cannot be optimized. Each potential call must actually call the exit. Otherwise, the exit would always return a code of zero. Once the user exits are entered into the user exit table, they can be assigned to other appropriate metadata components. For read exits, the exits must be assigned to a specific physical file entity. Remember that for each physical file read by views being processed, the logic table contains an RENX logic table row for that physical file. By assigning a read exit on the physical file, the generated RENX entry will contain the exit to be called each time a new record or block of data is needed. The data returned by the read exit must match the logical record that is assigned to this physical file. Thus, when a view accesses a field to perform perhaps a selection function, the data must match the logical record layout for the SAFR physical file quote unquote, entity, not the file read by the read exit. Standard lookups require the data to be joined to be defined by an LR. For lookup exits, the logical record to be returned by the exit must match the specified LR, not the data read from the file by the lookup exit, if there is any. In the example shown here, the phase code value must be returned by the lookup exit in position 3 for a length of 2. When defining logical records to be returned by the exit, define any of the input parameters the exit will require as keys, as if the exit were going to search a reference file table to find the required answer. Next, define the path that will provide the needed inputs to the exit. 
The values in the path can be provided as constants in the views or in the path, or as values passed from the input file or looked up from another lookup table, even one requiring an exit or multi-level lookups. After defining the LR and the lookup path, to assign a lookup exit to the logical record, select the LR Properties tab, then select the appropriate exit. When a field from the target LR is used in a view, this exit will be called to return the data in the format of the defined logical record. Thus, when the logic table is generated, the LUSM will be changed to an LUEX. This logic table function contains the user exit module to be called. Write exits and format exits are assigned in view properties. Write exits are assigned in the extract phase tab. Format exits are assigned in the format phase tab. Because both of these exits sit potentially at the end of the process, these exits do not return data to SAFR views. Therefore, no logical record defines the output from these exits. Rather, the view columns and format, file, hard copy, etc., define what these exits will receive. Changes to the view layout will affect the exits. Often, the write DT area option is used with write exits to eliminate the complexity of the extract record layout. Only the column data for DT columns is passed to the write exit. Each exit has the potential to receive a fixed set of parameters upon startup. These parameters are assigned for each instance that an exit is invoked. For example, a lookup exit may function differently depending on which LR it is supposed to return. Perhaps data can be returned in compressed format in one instance and not in another. The LR for the compressed data may pass in a startup parameter of CMPSD and the uncompressed LR would pass in a startup parameter of uncompressed. In this way, the same exit program can be used and which LR should be returned can be indicated as a parameter to the exit. Read exits receive only the startup parameters. Write and format exits also receive startup parameters. They also receive the extracted record from the view. Write exits also have visibility to the event file record as well. Lookup exits, by contrast, receive startup parameters. They also have visibility to the event file record. Additionally, lookup exits receive all the parameters built into the lookup path. These values must match the required key of the logical record. Note that the difference between these two types of parameters. Startup parameters do not change throughout the entire run of SAFR. They are constant. They are typically only used by exits at startup and determine which mode the program should function in. The lookup key values can change based upon every event file record processed. Customer ID on the first record may become customer ID 10,000 on the next record. We will use this view to show the GBB MR95 logic table and MR95 trace. Our example will use a lookup exit which returns various thread parameters that can be of interest for technical reasons in a view. The lookup exit is assigned on the LR and path we just examined. This is the logic table for the example view. Note that lookups, which would normally have the function code of LUSM, have been changed to the function code of LUEX. Also, for each LUEX, the ID associated with the user exit is assigned, in this case, ID 13. This is the ID assigned for the module GBB XL ENV. Our path required a single character value to be passed to the exit. This quote unquote key value, a constant of D, built by the look LKC function, will be passed to the exit as part of the lookup. Note also that the view has no write exit because the logic table is a WRXT not a WREX. Also note, there is no exit ID assigned to the WRXT row. This is the GVB MR95 trace for the logic table. For the event file record 1, the LKC function builds a key with a value of D in it. This value is passed to the exit GVB XL ENV during LUEX function. The exit is called. The view then uses the data through a DTL function placing value 001 into column 2. GBB LENV 
did not search any data. It simply queried the SAFR thread number to return a value of 0001. Also note that the number of times the exit is called is in this trace. Each lookup actually required calling the exit. This is the same view, but a new trace. In this trace, the optimize flag was turned on. This means that the logic table only has one executed LUEX function for the entire first event file record. Because the LKC value of D did not change between calls to the exit, the exit is not called again. The difference between the logic tables for the optimized and non-optimized is very clear. The optimized trace on the right saves significant CPU time, including the overhead for linking to the user exit mod multiple times on each event file record. Exits require CPU time by their nature, and the efficiency of the language runtime can also have an impact. Efficiency should carefully be considered when creating any exits. The trace shows the value placed in the key by the LKDT, LKC, and other lookup key functions, and the value of D in our example view. These parameters are passed to the lookup exit. It also shows the static parameters pass as well. These are shown on the end of the LKEX function row after the lookup exit module. Similar pat parameters can be seen in the trace for the read and write exits if startup parameters are passed. Exits must be written following the SAFR user exit guidelines. These specify a standard set of linkage parameters to interact with GBB MR95 and GBB MR88. They include a standard set of pointers used to access varied, various data provided by SAFR, including the event record, the extract record, lookup keys, and a work area for maintaining working storage parameters for the exit. Environment data, including the phase code, open, read, or close, informing the exit what the status of processing is. Exits are called during the 1. Open phase to prepare for processing, 2. Read phase as event file records are processed, and 3. Close phase to print out control reports, flush final records, or clean up. Return code values as well, informing SAFR of the results of processing. These can include a found, not found, or skip event record condition on a lookup exit, an end of file on a read exit, or write the standard extract record, write a different record and then return to the exit for processing, or skip the extract record and continue processing for write exits. All exits may signify view or processing level errors as well. As noted earlier in this graphic shows the potential for a sort user input exit. SAFR uses standard sort utilities provided by the operating system or otherwise. These utilities typically allow for a read exit to the sort utility, a program which stands between the sort exit and the file to be sorted. Procedures for writing these exits depend upon the sort utility used. Refer to the sort utility documentation for instructions. As an example of this type of exit, SAFR provides a module GBBSR02. This module accepts a parameter file instructing it which views to create multiple permutations for. Before the utility sorts the records, the sort exit will replicate the extracted data, creating new records within the permutated sort keys. This produces many more possible outputs without creating all the different views or exploding the extract files with all possible combinations. Using this exit requires concatenating special sort cards to GBB MR95 generated sort cards and creating parameters for the logic table program instructing them to generate permutations of the VDP views, similar to the process undertaken when it creates the JLT for the reference file. These views are never found in the metadata repository. They are temporary views only in that runs VDP. They they are required in the VDP for GBB MR88 to refer to in processing the permuted records. In this module, we examine the following logic table functions RENX, read exit, new event file record user exit, LUEX, lookup exit, calling a user exit, and WREX, write user exit calls. This module describes SAFR user exit routines. 
Now that you've completed this module, you should be able to describe uses for SAF or user exit routines, read a logic table and trace which uses exits, explain the function codes used in the example, and debug views using exits. Additional information about SAF is available at the web address as shown here. This concludes Module 20, Overview of SAF or User Exit Routines.